St. Augustus lived a worldly life for a long time. His mother, St. Monica, was on her knees constantly praying. I lived St. Augustus' life until I was uh, 20 and some change probably. I, 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 it was worldly and I did so. I wasn't always uh, uh, practicing my faith. Um, it took a while. It took a lot of uh, soul searching and uh, it took a lot of um, prayer on my mom's part to straighten some of us out. So I caught myself going back uh, to church. Uh, I caught myself, straightening myself out, realizing, okay, I was going down this path. This path is going, you know, going down nowhere. Come back this way, and I was like, if you just live your faith, it, uh, it'll straighten, it, it'll keep you in the straight and narrow. And it has. Back in the early 80s and the 80s, it was it was nice and it was flourishing and it was booming. Beautiful neighborhood. I always wanted this neighborhood, living in this neighborhood, uh, growing up. But that's when it was packed. That's when it was you know flourishing. You know, you had uh, uh, a huge, huge amount of kids. Uh, the soccer field would always be packed. The playgrounds would be uh, would be packed. Uh, they had a beautiful gazebo back out there, and it was really nice. But unfortunately. Uh, when the neighborhood started to change, uh, you had patches of uh, renters. Now, um, some of them are, were good, and some of them just had no respect for their property, or respect for themselves, or respect for anybody else's property. And that's when, um, that's when the destruction in the, uh, in the um, gazebo, destructions in some of the uh, 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 park uh, equipment, and um, you know the the people that own this the, this property now mean well, and they want to do you know good things in the neighborhood. But you know um, the maintenance of it is few and far between. We're doing a, uh, a young young adult mass, which is at 5:30 at Corpus Christi. Uh, in the past, with her being a teacher and um, I was a youth minister at one time, I was a soccer coach, um, I have numerous uh, kids that are that are my godchildren and I've sponsored for confirmation, so um, although we don't have any kids of our own, um, that house uh, here on Harvard has never been empty. But yeah, it's kind of heartbroken to know that um, seeing what it looked like in the 80s and how it was going back in the 90s and then when we moved in, it's like, you know, you got, you got neighbors who still care about the area, uh, still want it, want to uh, bring it back to where it was. I remember uh, cookouts, uh, this house and the other house that we lived in. Uh, when I coached soccer, I'd use that soccer field for practice from time to time. And when the season was over, my girls uh, that were on the team were on the softball team, and we'd be out there and uh, I'd give them a pitching practice while they were, you know, while they were hitting. Because of I coached uh, in in my uh, in my 30s, I've had the pleasure of seeing some of my young adults growing up to be uh, community leaders. I one in particular who I think of right now. His name is Will Smith. Oh my gosh, goofy as heck on the soccer field. A, a great soccer player, but goofy. But to know that he's actually uh, working in in in, uh, in politics and uh, mentoring. Uh, I, I am in awe of uh, God's work <laughs> because even he, he, I mean God straightened me out at, in, in my in my younger days to help out the youth so God straightened out uh, some of these young younger kids and see that the, the fruits of my labor have uh, have worked and I can't wait to see maybe the second tier uh, I, I, I'll look forward to that